Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the all merciful. Hello to you all for watching this program. Uh, we are talking about the techniques of propagation, and we also talked about in the previous discussions about the types, definition, and elements of communication. You know, the communication techniques and the propagation techniques. Uh, are very useful nowadays in the world of communication and if you want to communicate with the people so uh, you, ha you have to know about the uh, points which is uh, encouraging the people to listen to you so you have to be benefited from the techniques and the skills which enhance and accentuate the positive points in, in regard with your lecturing in regard with your communication uh, today, uh, I want to talk about uh, one technique which is used in the, uh, we can say, uh, media, okay, and uh, it is also relative technique. It can be positive from one hand, but negative from other hand. One of the techniques which is used is the intentional vagueness. Intentional weakness uh, is defined as following that the generalities are deliberately vague so that the audience may uh, supply its own interpretation. Uh, the intention is to move the audience by use of uh, undefined phrases without analyzing their validity or attempting to determine their for example, reasonableness or uh, application. Okay. This technique uh, is uh, used uh, for two purposes. First, to give the audience uh, an opportunity to interpret. You know, when you use intentional vagueness, you say you talk about just generalities. You don't analyze it. You don't interpret it. Just say one word and you go on. Okay. What is the purpose? When you say this word and go on, you have you have, for example, giving the audience uh, an opportunity that they can interpret but their own way of thinking. Okay, but it is uh, used for another purpose too that uh, you use these techniques intentionally, don't talk about the details, okay, that your audience be in a kind of uh, ignorance. Okay, you don't want your audience to uh, be benefited from the details, okay, you just talk about. Uh, for example, uh, generalities and go on. And uh, people think that they know, but they don't know that they don't know. This is a kind of compound ignorance. So, one of the uh, purposes of this technique is to give the opportunity to the audience that they uh, can interpret. Now, let me talk more in detail. For example, uh, if we want to talk about the positivity of this point, uh, look at the word, words of revelations. I don't know, in Quran or the Bible or, for example, uh, if you look at the Ten Commandments, okay, if you look at the Eastern religions uh, books, I don't know you see that the verses are very general. Why it is general? Because, for example, that book, okay, especially Quran, which is the last religion and is the seal of the religion's book, holy book, and there is no divine and revealed book higher than Quran in our belief, okay, because of its completeness. God the Almighty talks about just general points. Okay. Why? Because it has several reasons. 
because this Quran is not revealed just, for example, for the uh, Arabs of 14 centuries ago. Okay, it is for all the humanity. It is for all of the world, and in all the times, from the beginning to the end. I, it means that on, up to the end of the world, Quran will be used. So when God the Almighty talks here about the general points, it opens the hands of the readers in the coming years, centuries, and millenniums to extract more points from the heart of these verses, okay? The chapters, the words. And this is why the unit of the translation of the holy books is the word, not the sentence, or not the phrases, or not the extra textual. It is very limited. In the holy books uh, translation, it is uh, you know, highly recommended that you know, translate word by word or at most phrase by phrase. Do not use your understanding. Why? Because behind the words that maybe you now don't understand it, there are some points that maybe after 100 years they will understand what does it mean. Okay. For example, uh, in one verse, God the Almighty says that we have pillars between the, you know, the uh, earth and the stars, something like this. I, I advise you to refer to the verse. Now, the Quranic interpreters using this, that this means the gravity. Okay? The gravity. Quran talks about the gravity. Gravity is not discovered just, for example, a couple of hundred years ago, for example, or a century. It is the word of Quran which is revealed 14 centuries ago, 1,400 years ago. Okay? Talks about gravity. In that time, they wouldn't understand it. But now they understand this is gravity. So, this, uh, as a matter of fact, talking about the uh, generalities or intentional vagueness it has this benefit that this document, this book will become eternal because it will give the audience uh, the opportunity to interpret Okay, this is one of the reasons that for example Quran or the uh, mostly the divine books talk about the general points why all the Judaism is, for example, uh, summarized in ten commandments? What are the commandments? Don't lie, don't do adultery, don't spy, do not kill, for example, be good to the people. Or, for example, in the Zoroastrians, all the good is summarized in three, three, uh, three things, okay? good behavior, good intention, and, uh, for example, good, uh, for, for example, uh, talking. These are the things that are in the books, and uh, in the holy and divine books. Because it gives the opportunity for other generations, which will come in the future, to understand it more. However, this was one of the reasons. The other reason, for example, in Quran, it talks about generalities, is that, for example, uh, people will not fight with one another. Many people come and ask that, why the name of, for example, Lady Fatima Zahra is not mentioned in Quran? Why the name of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wasalam, are not in Quran? Okay. Maybe it has, according to uh, different views and the scholars, this intentional vagueness of, for example, Quran uh, is a kind of reconciliation between, do, uh, between you know, two denominations, for example, Shia and Sunni. If the name of these uh, holy uh, uh, persons were in Quran, uh, who knows? Maybe, this, for example, our brothers would discard Quran. And would we'll say this is not a true. 
This is not a real Quran. And, and another Quran would come, and it would be a kind of heterodoxy in Quran, new innovations in Quran, heresies in Quran. So, this intentional vagueness helps the audience, they themselves interpret, uh, for example, uh, Quran and understand the best ways of Quran and the verses. It, it gives them some opportunity at this point. However, this technique, intentional vagueness, could have some other, uh, for example, negative points too. By this way of, for example, intentional vagueness, you, uh, for example, you uh, height. If you go, if you refer to not holy text, which we said that in the holy text this is an exception, but for example in uh, other on, in the media, okay, the peop, for example the media comes and talk about the generalities. Why you don't talk about in detail? People must know about the details, okay. Why you use this technique, intentional vagueness? In order to, uh, for example, uh, make the people to live in their a kind of ignorance, okay? This is another technique, and this is another type of technique which is used in the uh, way of communication and propagation. And uh, we must be careful about the usages of these techniques. If we want to talk about, if we want to be benefited from this technique, and if you want to talk about generalities, okay, be careful in your lectures. When you address the people, always think that among the people are the people, for example, uh, who are against you, who are, for example, uh, not supporting your idea. So talk in a way that they couldn't find any faults, any uh, excuse to, for example, insult you, okay? And there are many narrations that uh, the best believers are those that they behave in a way that they will not be insulted. Don't uh, put yourself by your hands into the da danger, into the perishness, okay? Why? Because it will be... Why we have the, for example, concept of taghiyya uh, or uh, assimilation or this, this, uh, this simulation, which is used, for example, to show you an, uh, at the type of another belief, for example, it's just for in the very hard conditions. Why? That because you, do, you want to put the audience in a kind of intentional vagueness. So, this was uh, one of the other techniques that if you want to speak in a way that no one can misuse your information, if you want to talk in a way for example, you are talking about ahadith, you are talking about, you are lecturing in general. Okay, just, just use the general points. For example, when you talk about one figure, for example, you are talking about Western philosophy, you are talking about Hegel, you are talking about, I don't know, Kant, you talk about Habermas, any point. Okay, if you are not aware of the details of his or her, that scholar's view, just talk about, for example, generalities and go on, because uh, if you talk in detail, maybe there is a philosopher whose speciality is exactly, for example, Hegelian way of thought. So when you talk in a way you are not aware of, okay, so in that way, uh, for example, you will not be entrapped in the uh, critical points on the on, in the criticisms criticism of the audience. So this was one of the other techniques which is beneficial, and uh, we can be benefited from some points about this technique. And I hope that uh, we, by considering these techniques that up to now we talked about, I don't know, we talked about 
maybe 13, 14 techniques or more about the techniques of, for example, uh, we talked about the techniques in regard, for example, the big lie, I don't know, the transfer, uh, flag waving, okay, exaggeration, disinformation, euphemism, euphoria, I don't know the different techniques. By using this, uh, by knowing and using these testimonial techniques, okay, uh, to make the audience believe in the way that you want and to make them familiar with the real text of, for example, uh, Islam. I want to re just refer to one phrase, one hadith from Imam al Rida alayhi salam that uh, if people uh, would knew the beauties of our words, certainly they will they would follow us. What does it mean? It means that if you bring the beauties of the words and talk about the beauties of Islam, talk about the morals of Islam, ethics of Islam, they will certainly follow you. And this is the golden keyword and golden key of your success and victory in the discussions when you are talking to the audience, positive points, and accentuate your positives and eliminate your negatives. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.